Hello, this is Pamela. And this is Whitney. And we are the, the Witch, Witch Source. Source. We are your source for personal and magical empowerment. We are here to help you remember that you are magic. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the show. Okay, so our next series of episodes is going to be all about the chakras. And the chakras are the energy centers of the body. And learning and working with them is exceptionally important to any witch because when we practice our craft of spells and rituals, we are using and calling upon the energies of the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and the fifth element of spirit or source. And when you learn how to align your own energy, you gain a better understanding of how energy works and how and why magic works. Because magic is real, you are magic. When you learn about and work with your energy centers, you learn how to empower your own magic. So the information we're going to be sharing with you about the chakras is going to be specifically aligned to magical work. And while we borrow from ancient knowledge, we are inviting you on a journey through the magic of the chakras. So please keep this in mind with the information we are sharing. There is a wealth of information on chakras, their history, historic use, proper use, and the rabbit hole keeps going. So if you want to learn more, trust your intuition and do your own research. We are not making any claims that our way of using them is correct or better than any other system. We are sharing what works for us, what has strengthened our magical practices, what's helped us get results, and most importantly, what has helped us to heal and clear blocks in our lives so that we can man magically manifest our desires, experiences, and ultimately feel what we want to feel. So if this interests you and you want to learn more, we invite you to get out your magical journals and take notes. As we go through the chakras, you'll be required to do your own meditations and spiritual workings. Healing is the ultimate way to make yourself more powerful and free from everything that has been holding you back or keeping you stuck. This work is messy and emotional, but it's very rewarding. Uh, sometimes you will see immediate shifts in your life and in the people around you if you truly de dedicate yourself to it. So I want you to think for a moment about things that make you feel witchy. So is it your tarot or oracle deck, your magical tools like your wand, or your athame, or your cauldron? Is it your stones or your crystals or maybe something you wear like your witch's hat or your favorite outfit? So I want you to think about those things and I want you to really feel, you know, witchy. What makes you feel witchy? And when you're thinking about that item, the energy of those items is what helps you shift into that magical mindset. So now imagine your entire energy system being completely flooded with that magical energy. Do you feel the power within you? Because it's there. If not, we hope to help you get there. And if you do, we hope that you help. We hope to help you enhance that energy by being better aligned with your own open, clear channels of energy so that you can live in the magical energy and keep it close daily. I mean, that's really the best way to live. So if you went on that mini journey with us and you now have a good feeling of how magic works, everything is energy. So when a spell or ritual calls for certain ingredients like herbs, oils, crystals, anything like that, it's because those things carry the frequency and energy of the purpose and intention of your spell work. And that is why, my friends, it's called correspondences. Because they correspond with the energy and intention. And then you use your magical tools, like your wand, your athame, uh, and those kinds of items, along with music and words. You'll find that a lot of times spell work is... Um, the wording in your spell work is rhythmical and rhyming, and that's to help direct and manipulate the energy of the items, the correspondences that you are using. So it has nothing to do, say, with a red candle. It all has to do with the energy and frequency of the color red. It has nothing to do with rose petals. It has to do with the energy and frequency of roses, along with their scent, which triggers the brain to react in a certain way. That's part of the use of essential oils is the smell and that's why um, they have you diffuse the scents because they help shift your energy and they trigger reactions in the brain. So if you're doing a love spell, for example, 
While it would work to focus energy in your heart center, it would enhance and add a power punch to the spell to focus the energy in your root chakra. And, you know, your root chakra is also associated with the color red, which again goes back to your love and passion. But what it also does is you want to tap into the heart center for the love feeling, but then you want to pull that energy and the intention of your spell work and the crafting that you're doing and move it down to the root chakra because what that will help do is anchor the energy into reality. That will bring in what you're actually hoping to accomplish by doing the spell work. If you're just out here doing spell work and lighting candles and doing the chants, but you're not doing any of the energy work behind it, and you're not rooting that energy into your reality, that might be why you're not getting results because you're not fully pulling in the energy. So hopefully some of this is starting to click and make sense. Again, everything is energy. Your magic is energy. And so mixing your magic, your energy, along with the energy of the items that you're using, and then you call in the elements and cosmic energies, that's where the real magic happens. So if you're ready to get healed, aligned, cleared, and magical, and powerful, of course, play, please stay with us through these uh, series of podcasts because we're going to go through each chakra. And I'm going to encourage you to please do the exercises and work and really think on you know the things that we're going to be bringing to you because that's what's going to make the difference and help you see results. So my personal belief is that we are all part of source energy and life force is what is within each of us. That's what animates our bodies. So I feel like we are spiritual beings having a physical existence and we're here to learn lessons and learn more about how to create and work with energy. Um, and we're all tapped into the source energy. You know, we can use it how we want to. Um, you know, and there's consequences to any way that you use the energy, good or bad. Um, but we have to move from a place of fear, feeling powerless to powerful because we are powerful. Um, so when we clear the blocks and the lack of source energy in our bodies, we create a clear channel to better create. So the blocks are lack of energy in our chakras or energy centers, and that develops from our life situations that have caused us trauma and drama. And so we want to shift those things so that they no longer have a hold on you and they're no longer holding you back. And so breath work is going to be really important as we go through this because how you breathe really affects your entire system. So you think about it, when you're panicking and you're breathing short, shallow breaths, you're in that fight or flight mode and you turn on to survival mode. And you basically are shutting down your energy centers because you're trying to just survive. And if you think about it, when somebody tells you calm down, what do they tell you to do? Take slow, deep breaths because that is calming to your nervous system and it does bring the energy back into those energy centers. So breathing and breath work is going to be really important as we go through this. So to start, a good place to start with any kind of meditation practice or spell or ritual is what I like to do is start with protecting. So I set my intention before I do anything of let me be connecting to positive loving sources and I call in personally the goddess to work with me to help protect me and move me through the work that I'm doing staying in a positive light and so that I'm not inter interacting with any of the negative nasties in the universe is what I like to call them. Um, so that's my intention from the start to connect with love and light. Okay. So grounding, this is going to be what I'm going to walk you through right now is the techniques on how to ground center, connect, so that you're ready to use the tools that we're going to give you and, and go through healing and energizing, clearing and balancing your chakras. And this is the, the start of that. So this is what you're going to do before you do any kind of working. And really, this is what I like to do before any kind of spell work too, because it gets my energy in the place for really awesome, powerful spell work. So my favorite way to ground is I do a, a visualization. So I get good and comfortable. 
Um, and I, I tend to either sit in a comfortable chair or cross-legged on the floor. Um, those are just my two preferences. So get good and comfortable and then close your eyes and take three long, slow, deep breaths. And remember how important that is to your energy system. And a lot of times people will say, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. To be honest, that doesn't always work for me. I feel like doing the deep breathing is more important than how you're going about doing the deep breathing. So do it however you need to do it, as long as you're getting that calming, centering effect from that breathing. Okay. So another thing that I found really helpful, especially early on when trying to start a meditation practice, is I count backwards. And you can visualize the numbers or you can just say them in your head, but it also helps clear out some of the stray thoughts because a lot of people have a hard time getting their mind still when they're trying to meditate. So you can count backwards. You can start from 10, 5, 3, whatever feels comfortable for you, but count all the way down to zero because zero is that empty space that you're trying to reach. So that helps clear your mind and create that sense of peace and calm that you're looking for. Okay, so once you get to the zero, you should be feeling good and calm. And then what you want to do is you want to focus your energy and your attention on the base of your spine. And then see, feel, and visualize tree roots growing from that place down into the ground. And you can add your feet into this as well. So you feel, see, visualize the roots growing from the base of your spine, the bottoms of your feet, digging into the ground. And you just want to keep visualizing and digging until you reach a point that feels safe. You kind of feel a connection point. There's a little bit of a shift in there. And that's when you know you've really made, you know, the connection. And it may take time to get there, but you should eventually get there. If you keep digging far enough, you'll get there. Um, the next thing you can do is envision a cord dropping from the base of your spine and going straight into the center of the earth. And this is what is called a grounding cord and everybody has one, but it will also help you shift into that grounded feeling. Um, and at this point, a lot of times when I make that connection, I have that pulling sensation and I can feel my energy getting heavy and pulling down. And about this time is when I feel my body fully relax. It's when it just completely lets go. And I give, I give my energy over to that earthing energy and I let it take any negative feelings I've been having, any fears or worries that have been on my brain. I just feel them just being sucked and pulled out of my system and into the ground. And I know that the ground is taking it and absorbing it and transmuting it and pulling it away from me. So at that point, I feel really good and grounded. The tension in my body is gone. It's very, very relaxing. And so once you reach that point, the next thing I do is I connect to source. So I envision a cord going from the top of my head reaching all the way up out into the cosmos and you can see this however you want to you can maybe feel a love energy a light energy um it may be you know source or god or goddess whatever you connect with but if you keep pushing that cord up eventually you feel a space where you shift and you feel that that loving almost like a presence just surrounds you. You feel a connection point, kind of like when you are connecting with the ground, your source cord will also go up and connect. And again, everybody has these cords. So you have a grounding cord, you have a, a source cosmic connection cord. And so you're, you're going to enable both of those to get yourself really connected. And if you are, you know, out and about and you've got to get, you know, connected really quickly because you know you feel off you can send down that grounding cord you can send up your connecting cord and get connected very quickly and the more you practice this on a regular basis the easier it becomes and the faster that this happens it doesn't have to take a long time so once you have those two cords connected what I do is I feel the love and light pour down 
into the top of my head and pour through my body. Again, washing out any remnants of any fear or worry or tension, it just all goes. And then I feel the earth energy come up and meet in my heart center with the light energy coming down the source cord. And I feel those two energies merge in the heart center and it's a very expansive feeling. You feel very light and full because you've got that grounding energy, you've got the lightness of the cosmic energy, so you feel very full. It's, you should start to feel very expansive at this point. And then what I like to do is push that energy out through my heart center. And I will push it out through my home. Um, I'll start like with my room and I'll push it out through the room that I'm in. Then I push it out through my home and then I'll extend it out further to my family and loved ones. Um, and I just keep pushing that love energy out. Um, and that space, when you keep pushing and you keep pushing, I mean, you can push all the way out as far as you want to. You can go all the way out to the cosmos. And when you push all the way out, you'll feel a complete peaceful shift um, in your energy. And at that point, that is the place in which I feel the most powerful, the most magical, and I feel like that expansive feeling in space is where you can really start to create and make changes in your life and change the energy around you and start to really do magic because you're, you're going to be able to tap into energies and start, you know, slowly shifting and manipulating things to be what you want it to be, which is ultimately what we're doing with spell work. We're, we're manipulating energies to create results. Okay, so at this point, when you're in that expansive space and you're tapped into that magical energy, there's multiple things you can do here. So at this point, you can do meditation um, and you can do, there's lots of ways to do meditation. You can just sit in that feeling and leave the space and the openness and just allow for thoughts, um, you know, visions, answers to questions, this is a space where I can meditate and really connect with my guides and goddess and you know the different entities that I work with and I will get answers just dropped in. Um, so this is a space that you can do that in so you can use it for just meditation. You can do it just for calming peace. If you're wanting to heal your body, you can focus on spreading loving light and energy through your entire system. Um, and another thing you can do here is just your basic energy work, which is what we're going to be doing with the chakras. So this expansive state is where the healing takes place because you can then pull in energy that you need. You can pull in light that you need and you can direct it to different areas of your body and to the different chakras. So that's the groundwork. That's the layout. We're going to invite you to do this. Um, every time you go to do this healing work on your energy centers, um, because it really is this magical sweet spot like that. This is the place where change happens, creation happens. So we are going to start with the root chakra because it is the root of everything, right? It is literally the foundation point for the rest of your energy centers. And we all know if you don't have a strong foundation, everything else just crumbles. You can't get a good footing in anything else. No. And uh, also, the root chakra is always the weakest chakra. It takes on all the emotions, negative emotions, such as anxiety, anger, hurt, fear. So it gets blasted more time than any other because with the other chakras, it's carrying those. So it gets all those and then some. Right. So it's the most damaged chakra. But we're going to work on teaching you how to heal that chakra. Exactly. And, uh, <clears throat> and what I had found, music... And aromatherapy 
your essential oils, the guys, your senses. That energy takes you to a place to where you can meditate to be able to work on the healing. And uh, I know that you, you're a crystal girl. You love your crystals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you discuss the crystals okay. that, that can be used and go in just a little bit about them. Sure. And uh, then I'll do the uh, the essential oils and uh, more information. But yeah, go ahead, Miss Whitney. Okay. So here are some practical hands-on things that you can, you know, do to help you heal these chakras. The right. crystals being the first point here. So um, bloodstone is a great root chakra healing stone. Um, bloodstone has history and ties to Christ consciousness. So if that's your magical leaning, you know, you can tap into that. Um, but bloodstone also helps filter and clean your actual blood and the system in your blood and um, just really brings in the healing because not only does bloodstone have red in it, which is associated with your root chakra, it also has green in it, which is very earthing and grounding. And one of the main things you need to do with your root chakra to get it healed is get it grounded. So bloodstone's a great one. Uh, red jasper is another great one, again, with the red. Um, garnet is a good one. Shungite and smoky quartz um, are also great earthing, grounding chakra root chakra healing stones along with hematite and carnelian. Um, and carnelian, as I've mentioned before, uh, does not need to be cleaned. It is a self-cleaning crystal. Now, it's still good to give it its sun bath, but it can really help clean out the blockages and, and the traumas and dramas that are stored in that root chakra. So carnelian is a great one too. And black tourmaline is very uh, a pr protective stone and it's a great root chakra stone because our root chakra is tied, of course, to your sense of security, um, all your survival needs. So if you don't feel safe in your body, if you don't feel safe in your environment, your root chakra is all kinds of messed up. And so black tourmaline can really help bring in that sense of safety. And, you know, the whole thing with the chakras too is they vibrate at different frequencies and different hertz can help align and heal your chakras. And so what the stones do, how your crystals work, you know, as mentioned in the crystal episode, if you haven't heard it, go back and check it out. Um, we talk about how and why crystals work, but they emit frequencies, which then help you align your energy to that crystal's energy. So if you need more, you know, of this frequency and hertz associated with your root chakra to get it healed, using these stones helps your body shift and bring in that frequency and that healing energy. Good information, Miss Whitney. Uh, now, as far as the aromatherapy, you can use incense or essential oils. And um, as far as incense, I would do sandalwood, cedarwood, patchouli, um, spruce, uh, clove, ginger, as far mm -hmm. as uh, incense. Right. And then, you know, you could use those same things in essential oil. But you can also do uh, juniper, cypress, uh, myrrh, and frankincense mm -hmm. with essential oil. Now, all those are what? Let's think what they all are. Earth. Yeah. They're all earth grounding. Yeah. So those help pull that in to ground even more. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I found when you ground, you become he heavy. It's like, oh, I'm being pulled. But also, I tingle. I tingle and uh, get chills. I'll get the chills. And that's your intuitive going off. That's your signal. Oh, it's happening. I'm grounded. I'm getting the chills. And you will also, I have found for me, I'll get hot spots in certain places like on my feet. There'll be like a hot flash in my feet or in my knee mm. or in my hip. 
And it's like, this is where the pulling is going on, the centering, pulling down. Especially since I've been working really hard on it recently. I've noticed, I'm like, wow, why am I burning like in this area? Well, I'm getting hot all of a sudden. And that's part of the grounding that I've experienced. It's like, this is really cool. It's eye-opening. It makes you feel good that I am doing this. The energy work is working. Right. It, it is real. You're connected. The magic is real. Right. Connected. Yes. And uh, another thing, like I said, you you feel heavier, but become one with nature also. Walk barefoot in the grass. Put your hands mm-hmm. on Mother Earth because she absorbs so much from us. Yes. Not just she helps us heal, but she takes a lot of negativity on herself from us. hmm and we need to thank her for that, too, for doing that. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Oh, I've got a crazy coffee going on. Cough. Um, once you're balanced, and I don't know if you've... Once you're balanced, I am less fearful. I'm less anxious. I can't get before angry over silly things. Now, it's not worth getting angry. Right. You're not worth messing up my line. Right. Right. It's not important. It's... Oh, yeah. You can feel a definite shift. So, your actual person and being, you will see changes when you start doing this work because you will start to move and feel differently in the world. Like, you know, if you... You know, one of the symptoms of your root chakra being off balance is low confidence, low self-esteem, you know, not feeling safe, not feeling like you have a purpose or a reason for being on this earth. Right. And that's all signs and symptoms that your your root chakra needs to be healed and balanced. And you do. You literally feel that shift of, I feel more confident. I feel empowered. I feel <clears throat> stronger and more certain in my place in the world. Well, that's the purpose. Everybody wants to know, why am I here? What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Your root chakra is messed up. Right. It's just that simple. When you don't understand your purpose, or am I just here to work and pay the bills? Mm -hmm. How many times have I heard that from people? Right. No, that's not your purpose. That's the way you were raised. Right. That's being in survival mode because, again... The root chakra is messed up. Right. So once you heal the root chakra... That is empowering you to believe you are empowered and you move up. And once you heal all chakras, you reach a plane to where you're like, what was I living? Where was I at? What was I doing? What yes. was I thinking? Yes. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yes, this is wonderful. This is magic. I don't want this to ever shift to the way it was before. Right. Right. And that's why you will continually work on keeping your chakras repaired, safe, and took care of. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. You move from feeling powerless right. to In- so very powerful. Yes. Talking about the tingle really quick, I got a grounding pad recently. Um, it was gifted to me by a friend, and you have, it's this little snap, and it snaps onto the pad, and then on the other end of the cord that snaps to the pad, it looks like um, the three prongs that go on an outlet, right? But you take away the top two. So it's just the grounding part that you plug into the wall. And I know people think I'm crazy because the friend that gave it to me, he doesn't feel it at all. But I feel, when I put my bare feet on that pad, I feel that tingle. And I will feel that tingle spread up my legs. And I'm like, how do you not feel this? You don't, you're not feeling this? Like, it it works and he because he kept saying I don't know if this thing works or not and I'm like oh it works I can feel it I can't believe you can't feel it so if you need help extra help getting grounded you should check out the grounding pads because I've really enjoyed mine that's what they're called grounding pads Mm -hmm. yep so write that down people grounding pads yeah very very helpful that would be a good investment yeah I like to keep mine um under my desk while I'm working, and I just keep my bare feet on it, and then yeah. you don't stress at work, do you? No, no stress at work. Because I stay so grounded. <laughs> yeah, you're grounded. Problems really come good. up, and I'm like, I got this. <laughs> you go in this style. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what. Well, once it's healed, you're you're good. 
and you know people want to talk about nutrient the soul nurturing the soul mm -hmm. well that goes with your chakras too you have to keep your chakras healthy and look at the colors of your chakras red root red fruits red vegetables your beets your cherries your cranberries your pomegranate um, anything that is red red onions red grapes cranberries all of these help you strengthen that chakra mm -hmm. and I don't th I, I believe and I feel I haven't seen this anywhere it could be out there but you know when you exercise you're building muscle you're mm -hmm. building mass mm -hmm. who's to say that your chakra is this you know say it's the size of the apple if you're building mass and you're nurturing that chakra who's to say that it won't grow and expand and become more powerful I'm not saying grow like a watermelon size but it will get stronger mm -hmm. the muscles will be strengthened to where those things that come in negatively they bounce off and they're not affecting it as they did before because you're constantly every day regrounding recentering and healing right to where eventually it's an everyday thing it's not going to get hurt anymore right right yeah no I, I i totally agree and i do believe and i and i have i have heard um that when your energy centers are closed off or shut down due to some kind of traumatic event or the need to go into survival mode you pull your energy in so much because you want to be so guarded and um, cut off from other people again fight or flight survival mode you can really contract all your energy centers and make them very very small well, and that will throw everything in your life off balance I mean everything especially in your root chakra again being the foundation if it is restricted and contracted and your energy is so small I mean that's when you tend to find yourself in some really messed up situations that you know you you don't even realize that you're in at the time yeah. you know but it's like yeah you you pulled your energy you made yourself so small on purpose to for protection for protect yeah to, to protect yourself self-preservation but you can't live in that state because what happens is you'll start to get sick you'll start to have physical disease you'll have pain you'll have you know all kinds of stuff that goes wonky and you know, where's this your body. from why am i why am i sick all the time all of a sudden exactly you know and again you know we talked about prior to the show all the physical symptoms of your chakra being off your root chakra yes and i mean the uh, the spinal cord mm -hmm. um you know the sickness of the belly this you know mm -hmm. if you're not happy you don't eat right you gain weight mm -hmm. uh, people don't realize it's a circle if you aren't healed inside healthy with inside your lifestyle is not going to be healthy right the food you eat the way you live the things you do I am not perfect by any means nor am I <laughs> but I really and I'm not trying to be a what is it a, a Weight Watchers type person or mm -hmm. any right way. Get healthy all of a sudden. Eat your vegetables. Do this. You know, hey, I like my chocolate. I'm not going <laughs> to give up my chocolate. Right. But living healthier for the inside mm -hmm. helps the inside be healthier. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so like some of the things that we had talked about when your root chakra is off, you could have problems with your reproductive organs, you know, you could have a lot of infections and stuff going on in your lady parts. Yes. Um, men can have erectile dysfunction, yes. you know, um, your your bowels being messed up, um, any kind of things going on in the lower part of your body. It could be if your, your hips, legs. Yeah, your hips, feet. your legs, knees, feet. Um, I just had stents put in because my vascular from my hips down my groin area the veins had got clogged up mm. I wonder why my root chakra was out of whack with everything that had been going on right I had more stress on me wasn't facing facts I end up having to have stents right 
fixing that root chakra has helped me beyond measure that even a doctor couldn't help me with. Right. By me healing that chakra, I am so much better. Right. And I think once people start healing their chakras, they're going to find out, this is amazing. Right. Yeah. I no longer need to worry about these things that's been hurting me. Right. The pain starts to get yes. better. I mean, I know, me personally, before I had so much clearing in the root chakra, all this work that you and I have been doing on our root chakra, um, I had a lot of pain in my hips. Uh, and, you know, I had been to the doctor, and they really didn't have a whole lot of answers for me, you know. Um, they're telling me these different exercises to try, but there was no real cause of it. I just had this pain in my hips and it's gone, which is crazy to me because I mean, this has been going on for months, you know, and it would just hit me out of nowhere. Like there was nothing that would cause it. And that's what another thing that was confusing the doctors. I'd be like, you know, I could be on my feet all day and not have a problem. And then I could get out of the bed and just walk across the room and I'm going down because my hip is in so much pain. I can't even walk, you know, and they couldn't understand that there was no trigger for it, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's been gone and it's, I feel a world of difference, you know, but especially like we were talking about, like just your change in in your, your sense of well being in the world and your place in the world and your confidence level and your, um, you know, just being secure within yourself and your body and who you are, you know, just that alone has been such a huge, notable change within myself since we've been, you know, really diving in and doing this, this yes, work. The, the clearing up and the healing. And mm-hmm. I have found that, um, or before I wouldn't have confidence in being able to speak the truth mm-hmm. because I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to argue with anyone. Right. I didn't want to have to face the the truth is the fact right and uh that fear is gone right this is the way it is right and i'm sorry if you don't like it that's your choice to not like it but i don't fear telling you the truth now right because i don't want the repercussions of how you're going to feel right exactly you're owning your feelings and your shit and you're inviting them to own theirs right you know and if they do or don't that's on them Right. That's no longer for you to care about. That's not your shit to carry. Right. And I think that goes back to, you know, no longer feeling a need to explain yourself. Right. And it's all in the healing of the chakras. Yeah. Once you start healing them, the windows open, that fresh breath of air comes in. Yes. And you're like, what was I doing? Right. Why did I do that? Yes. And the ability to say no. The no. Yes. The no has been huge. Yes, it has. Big. Because, you know, can you do this for me? Uh, sure. Mm-hmm. Can you do this? Sure. And it's not that you didn't want to, but it, it's the same people that call on you all the time. Yes. That want you to do something for them all the time. Mm-hmm. But then when you call on them, I'm busy. Right. Or I can't right now. Right. But you're there for everybody every single time. Right. And to be able to finally say, you know what? I can't. I don't have the time. I've got something going on. And it'd be the truth. Right. Or even... You know, not even feeling the need to explain it. Just, no. No. Right. Just, no. no. And having the confidence to do that and dropping the weight of having to be a people pleaser. Well, I'm not only that. When you say no, when I used to say no, it was, okay, I know I'm going to be talked about. Well, why didn't she? I don't know why she did it. But that doesn't matter to me anymore. Right. That's your problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Before it was like, well, I know they're going to talk. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to get a phone call. Well, why didn't you? Well, yeah, and then have to explain to four different people. Right. Where now, no is no. Right. Deal with it. Right. And that is so empowering. Absolutely. And listeners, you will find once you heal that root root chakra, you will become so empowered just by healing that one first. Yes. Yes. And then, well, as we move up. You're going to be so amazed. You're going to be like, wow. You're going to be, it's a wow factor. It really is. And it has been, yeah, for us. I know it has been. So, continuing with this 
this series. So like we're telling you what to look for, you know, what shows you and tells you that your chakra is unbalanced. Um, so we really want to also help you recognize when it needs to be healed, but also how to do the healing. Yes. So you want to start? You want me to? Well, I, I think it just boils down to what we discussed in your, what we just talked about, the meditating. Mm-hmm. And how you described how you meditated and what you did. But also pulling in sounds, crystals, uh, aromas Mm -hmm. that relax, that take you to that place of grounding and healing. And like we said, the crystals, the essential oils, the incense, but food also. Right. It's not, it's a... Like I said, it's a it's a bowl full of goodies. Right, mind, body, soul, all yes. together. And you have to do that. What was the Hertz level? <clears throat> can you find that? The yes, I can. Hertz. So there's certain frequencies that go along with each chakra, and so you can actually just go on YouTube and you know type in um, the Hertz. So for the root chakra, you want to look up 396 Hertz. So just go to YouTube, type in. 396 hertz, and you should have probably a wealth of options come up. And so when you go and do the meditation process that we talked about at the beginning of the show, you know, bring that music in, you know, as you're starting, you know, if your intention going in is to heal that root chakra and and work on it, go ahead and pull that music in and be listening to it. Have your um, crystals and stones for the root chakra, hold them, you know, Put them on your body if you need to lay down and put them on your body or set them in your lap or what have you. Um, I know a good way to get grounded is to um, hold a smoky quartz stone between your feet because there's those energy centers in the bottom of your feet. So uh, that was another thing we wanted to mention. There are energy centers all over your body. There are countless ones. I mean, they're they're in your hands, they're in your feet, they're in your knees. There's there's chakras and portals and energy centers everywhere. Everywhere. But they all lead back and connect to the main seven that we're going to be talking about. So that's why we're going to focus on those because as you heal those, all the others throughout your system are going to heal as well. Right. So I know as far as the healing. So yes, you you go into your meditation. You have your crystals. You have your hurts. You focus and direct your energy and pull in you can pull in the elemental energies into your root chakra, pull in the fire, pull in the water, pull in the earth, pull in the air, call on those elements, call on source of life, and send all that energy to your root chakra. And then you've got to pay attention to what comes up for you. So you need to remember your root chakra is all about security, finances. safety, finances, um, feeling rooted you know, if you're moving all the time, that might be a sign that something's off. If you're having financial problems, something's <coughs> off. If you can't ever feel like you're financially secure, you know, your root chakra is probably Job off. Job hopping around. Job hopping, yeah. You know, all of that because it goes back to your sense of safety and security um, in this physical body. And that's so extremely important because we are here. So you can't, you can't ignore the grounding and the healing factor in the root chakra. And so me personally, when I was going through and we were doing this work um, on the root chakra, what really uh, stood out for me was fear. I had a whole lot of fear. And, you know, you have to be really open and ready to do this work because, again, it can be very emotional and messy. Because you're facing truths that you've pushed aside. Right. So a lot of times you have to go back to your childhood because our sense of security goes back to when you were a small child, even to the point of being a baby. When you are a baby, you are fully dependent on another person to provide for your needs, to make sure that you're changed, you're fed, you're clean, you're healthy. You know, you are fully dependent. So if you were lacking in any of those basic needs as a child from literally birth, you know, 
all the way up to, I would say, 13, 14, 14 yeah. 15, somewhere in there. You know, if your basic needs weren't met emotionally, mentally, physically, then you probably could have, more than likely, problems with your root chakra. And that goes back to that sense of security and safety. So for me, I, as a child, uh, experienced a lot of fear and in my environment that I was growing up in. And I realized once we started working on and doing the work on this root chakra that part of that fear was mine and my actual situation that I was in. And part of the fear was borrowed fear from my mother because she was also in a fearful environment. And so I was picking up, you know, on her fear as well and taking that on as a child. So I had the double whammy of the, the fear. Um, and then you know, it goes back to the lack of you know, those basic nurturing needs. And I never realized until literally just the last couple weeks that we've been doing this work, like that big breakthrough happened of you telling me you are not that scared, fearful child anymore. Right. And that should have been obvious. Right. I mean, I was like, you're a grown woman now with a child. Right. You know, I'm 35 and you would have thought, I would have healed this by now, but it was so deeply rooted within me. I never saw it. I didn't see it, you know, and, but that, when that was brought to light and I allowed myself to realize that that fear was there and was still here because I still interact with these people, you know, in my, my life, yes. you know, and I did not realize I still had this fear and I was still allowing myself to be treated in a certain way well and every time that person was in front of you there's the little girl yes not the grown woman yes you turn from this grown woman back to that child right instantly right he held that much power over you yes absolutely until you said enough enough and now i feel so much more powerful so much more secure and confident because I can say, I'm not afraid of you anymore. Right. And your behavior is no longer acceptable in my life. I'm so proud. I'm really proud of you for reaching that goal. Thank you. Well, you <laughs> helped me get there, so thank you to you. You're welcome. But, I mean, that that is huge to me. And to be able to confidently put up that boundary, because that's so important. Boundaries are so important to Once say. you know, yeah. you stop it. Right. You know, if you want to continue to be in my life, this is no longer acceptable. You know? And it's okay to say that. Yes. And not fear saying it. Yes. And once you have that knowledge of that, you are really empowered and more powerful than you realize. Right. Well, and and goes, that's what we're hoping to bring to our listeners. Oh, absolutely. And it goes back to that sense of safety and security and, you know, eliminating, it completely eliminated all need of the people pleasing or trying to get approval from somebody else. I don't need it anymore. Once I healed that deeply rooted, you know, root chakra trauma in my life and in myself, I, you know, I'm here. I'm like, I don't even need you in my life. I don't care if you like what I do or don't you. And you're happier. Oh God. Yes. I'm so much happier. Yes. I like mean, I feel free. I am right. it's so free. Yeah. You feel lighter. Yes. That yes. that boulder that was you were carrying around yeah. got blasted away. Right. And again, you know, I've carried this since, well, 30 years. Yeah. And didn't even know, did not even realize that I was still holding on to that. Right. So, you know, the biggest thing is, is facing those fears and facing that and looking at it now. Like mm -hmm. going back into those traumas, to those areas where you're safety and and your security were questioned right. and damaged and going back to those events in your life while in this meditative magical clearing state and you've got these things that are helping bring out the frequencies within you and the energy within you to be able to say I'm ready to face this and heal it that's where the power is so you just, in your mind, when you get into that clear, magical space, 
go back, go back into that event. Anytime you have a trigger, anywhere you have anger stored, anything that you have stuffed and suppressed, those are the things that you want to pull up and look at. And you have to be willing to say, I am no longer the victim. And this is where your power comes in. And again, you at this point are grounded, you're rooted, you're in that magical space, you are empowered. And you can say to the the people in that event in the past, I am no longer a victim. I now control the situation. I now control my energy. And my energy says, you can't hurt me anymore. And if you can't find that, what I would suggest is think of a time or think of that thing that always makes you cry. Yes. What hurts your heart? Mm. A certain smell. Does it remind you of someone? And that makes you cry. Mm-hmm. Um, mine was my grandfather. I was Mine was anger. Mm-hmm. My grandfather died and left me. Mm-hmm. Everyone dies. Right. But he left me. Why did he die and leave me? And you were angry. Oh, I was. Oh, you know. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't talk about my grandpa Sawyer's without the tears rolling. I right. mean, like he had just died yesterday. Right. Yeah. I'm not crying today. No. And I should be in my mind. Why are you not bawling your eyes out? That's your grandfather. You loved him so much. Mm-hmm. But I healed. Right. And he's with me. Right. Oh, yeah. And I'm good. Right. There's no need to cry anymore. Right. So that healing helped me reach another level. Mm-hmm. So you got to look. What broke your heart also? Mm-hmm. Anger, hurt, fear. It could be all of them. Right. Abandonment, which was another right. one for me. But, I mean, mine was anger. Your main one was the fear of being able to, that little girl in fear. Well, and two, you know, I was always angry. And I did not realize, and that was linked to the abandonment, the feeling of being abandoned as a, a small child. I mean, stupid, small things would set me off and I would be so triggered and so angry and just become so hateful. And I had absolutely no reason why. And it would drive me crazy because I would be so angry and I couldn't calm down. And then what do we as humans do? We direct that anger inward. Right. So then I would be mad and angry and hateful towards myself for the reaction of anger that just came out of me out of nowhere, but it was all that suppressed anger. And until I was able to say, I'm angry, I was abandoned. Right. And heal that, go back. And yes, I went back to that moment of when I felt that exact abandonment and I felt that cord being cut by, you know, my mom and Mm. feeling that abandonment and I relived that pain, you know, and I was, I just bawled and bawled and bawled for probably, you know, a good 30 minutes straight because I literally felt that cut again all over. Over. And then I had to get to the place I realized she was doing the best she could at that time. With and what she knew. With what she knew and what she had and, and who the she life was. she had to add. Exactly. And her history, you know, she was doing the best she could. And I had to go back and I went back to that child me and I scooped up and hugged that child me and I said, I love you so much. You are so loved. You are an awesome kid. You are incredible, and you are going to do amazing things, and I am so proud of you. I gave that child me that love in that moment when that cord was cut that I felt it, and it was like everything shifted. Everything shifted, and then I was able to say and feel, truly feel, I forgive you. I forgive you. I have compassion. I understand I forgive you. I release you. I release it from myself. I let it go. And you feel so much better for it. Oh, yeah. 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 And that's what we're here for, to Mm -hmm. help people reach that release Mm -hmm. to find happiness. Mm -hmm. But I had to get rid... I think I had to get rid of the anger that was associated with that abandonment 
before I could even get, and this was months ago, you know, before I could even get to just in the last week, that fear block that was still there to be healed. So it literally is layers that you peel off and you pull out, you know, these traumas. And, you know, again, with the root chakra, that's your foundation. That's your sense of security. That's your place of being. If you didn't feel loved, if you didn't feel wanted, if you didn't feel supported, if you didn't feel like your needs were met as a child, those are the places you've got to go to to heal that. And so you start with your childhood as far back as you can remember, and you just start peeling off the layers. And heal. Yeah, and heal. And And then as you get through it, trying to find understanding or compassion or shift the energy or love yourself, give your child self the love that you didn't have in that moment, that's where the healing piece comes in. And when you are in, again, that magical space of grounded, centered, connected, it makes it so much easier easier to shift the energies and to remove those blocks and heal what needs to be healed there and that's the important piece that we want to to bring to you so you know this is the root chakra work and it is emotional and messy but it is so so rewarding so Mm. rewarding and it's a continual work yes it is it's a non-stopping work yeah and uh we'll move from the root chakra Mm -hmm. to the sacral will be the next episode um, and we'll tell you all about how to know if it's off unbalanced what to look for how to nourish how to replenish how to heal that one so we hope that you've enjoyed this uh, episode we hope that you got some value out of it Um, if you have any questions or uh, comments we'd love to hear from you you can email us uh, the witch source at gmail.com um yeah we we'd love to to hear please from allow you. us at least 48 hours to get back maybe yeah give us time to respond uh, you know we do and we do look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions or even if you have uh an experience that while you were trying to heal your root chakra that you can have across, yeah and i like to share we can um uh, share that on maybe the yeah, let us know. If you send us stuff where you're like, hey, you know, did this, tried it, this happened, it was amazing, we would love to hear that. And please let us know if we have permission to share it on the show because we would absolutely love to to share your experiences. And, you know, we want to know that this stuff's working for you and that it's helping you because that's what we're here for, to Because, yeah, we want you. to be your, your the witch source. Yeah. We want to definitely be here for you yeah and as you go through this and heal it and get that confidence and get that power your magic is going to be so much more powerful and you will see the results absolutely well blessed be and y'all have a very wonderful day mention it